நண்பர்களுக்கு வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் பிராட் யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் த டேமு வீடியோ ஆஃப் அ ரெனோண்ட் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் ஜோதிஷ் மகா குரு ஆதித்ய குருஜி திஸ் இஸ் அ கொஸ்டின் ஃப்ரம் குமரன் இஃப் லார்ட் ஆஃப் ஃபிஃப்த் ஹவுஸ் இஸ் இன் டென்த் ஹவுஸ் ஷுட் வி ஜட்ஜ் தட் த பிளானட் இஸ் இன் த ஸ்ட்ராங்கஸ்ட் குவாட்ரண்ட் ஹவுஸ் ஆர் அக்கார்டிங் டு பாவத் பாவம் த பிளானட் இஸ் இன் சிக்ஸ்த் ஹவுஸ் ஃப்ரம் ஃபிஃப்த் ஹவுஸ் இஃப் பாவத் பாவம் இஸ் சஷ்டாஷ்டகா அண்ட் இஃப் த பிளானட் இஸ் இன் த ஸ்ட்ராங்கஸ்ட் ட்ரைன் ஆர் ஸ்ட்ராங்கஸ்ட் குவாட்ரண்ட் டு த அசென்டன்ட் ஹவு டு ப்ரெடிக்ட் டியர் குமரன் this is one of the common doubts of the beginners you will learn in course of time i had once written an article about the sukshma state or subtle state of chaya graha or shadow planets where i mentioned my experience as 30 years and now it is 40 years of experience a subscriber once questioned me that how could he be very spiritual while his jupiter has less strength he added that it was contradictory to my point that a person will be spiritual if only jupiter is in good strength otherwise not i told him he cannot acquire knowledge that i gained from 30 years of research by merely reading a few of my articles or watching a few youtube videos i reiterate the same to you read again and again acquire the experience learn again and try to predict many charts the increase of this learning will let your brain to store the information somewhere in the neurons and that can be tapped or retrieved at the right moment when you are trying to predict a chart more the number of charts you try to predict more you learn and more you watch the videos of astrologers like me all these will be stored in billions of neurons in the brain and you should apply that while predicting a chart this is the fact don't be in an urge to attempt to acquire complete knowledge in just 3 months this is not a game we can see a lot of advertisements that promote learning astrology in just 3 months or within a couple of days where a good prediction will be a forlorn hope there is no truth behind these sort of fascinating advertisements you can't learn astrology in this manner at all there are many astrologers who blow their own trumpets with merely the number of years of experience rather i would say the number of years they exist in this field yet possess no good knowledge in astrology astrology is a big ocean knowledge in astrology is gained by learning a lot of books watching a lot of videos applying those practically trying to predict many charts there are many people who are a bit unfortunate while they take their first steps in astrology they get diverted by reading many unnecessary books like learning the effect of the planet for example what is the effect of the sun in 5th house jupiter in 10th house etc This really diverts the goal of the learner and since these books are easily comprehensible the reader or the learner inclines to read such books perpetually As my books demand a lot of concentration and are not easily comprehensible the learners naturally lose their tendency to read my books I may sound monotonous to many it is easy for a learner or a beginner to understand a simple logic like if the sun is in 5th house there is no progeny and if sun and mars are in conjunction in 7th house then the native is a widow or widower but these sort of statements diverts the learner from the facts all these are diverting the learners from the truth from my experience and my profound knowledge i try to elucidate in a simple manner and i suggest you watch my videos again and again there are many among you who conclude that they have become astrologers post watching my videos for 3 months many of my premium subscribers say that they are experienced enough to become an astrologer can you imagine within 3 months they say they have acquired enough knowledge to become an astrologer your question is when the lord of 5th house is in 10th house should we judge 
that the planet is in the strongest quadrant or the planet is 6 from its house based on Bhavat Bhava. Your question is Your question is when the Lord of 5th house is in 10th house should we judge that the planet is in the strongest quadrant or the planet is in 6th from the 5th house on Bhavat Bhava. My answer to this is you have to consider both but to which rule the priority is given that is the key. The Lord of Trine in the quadrant and the Lord of Quadrant in the Trine is considered to be Yoga. The Lord of Quadrant and the Lord of Trine in conjunction is also considered to be Yoga. Among the Lord of the Trine and the Quadrant, if the Lord of the Trine is in the Trine itself, it is beneficial. And the Lord of Kendra in the Kendra itself is considered to be again Yoga. In yesterday's TV program, I mentioned that for Cancer Ascendant, Mars being the Lord of 5th house, if residing in the same house is not good. The same planet, if it is in the 6th from its own house, then it is good. I believe that you have picked your question from my program. For Cancer Ascendant, if the Lord of the 5th house is in the same house, it will not give benefits provided it is not Subhatwa. If the planet has no Subhatwa, that is beneficial strength, and it is in the 5th house, then the 5th house is spoiled. Mars will spoil 5th house and during its Dasha, that is major planetary period, the intended benefits will not happen. What is the antidote? When a Malafic, that is Mars, being a natural Malafic, becomes the lord of the 5th house, it has to disappear to the 6th from its house and to be in quadrant at 10th house is good as the malefic should gain strength in the quadrants and the benefics should gain strength in the trine. That is what the original dictum says. There are many poems that are contradictory to my point like the poem of Pulipani Siddhar. These poems are apocryphal. If you believe those poems, you can never learn astrology. Those who follow me, please don't follow these poems. The poem that says when Lord of Fifth House being extremely benefic or malefic, deliver good results. All these derivations are phony and I'm very sure about my statements as it was out of my umpteen years of experience and research of many charts. In any case, the malefic should not become the Lord of Trine. This is contradictory to traditional astrology. A client from Madurai, maybe four days before, expostulated with me that if Saturn is in ninth house, it is a great yoga. He also added that I gained a lot of fame and reputation since Saturn is in ninth house in my chart. He said that I lead as number one astrologer since I am Gemini ascendant and Saturn is in the ninth house in my chart. I really suggested him to hang off the phone. Don't believe these poems. The ability of writing the poem is not the eligibility of becoming an astrologer. The one who writes poems simply deserves to be a poet, not an astrologer. The one who can write poems becomes a poet, not an astrologer. To become a poet or an astrologer, Mercury needs to be strong. The one who writes poems in the name of Pulipani was a poet. There is no authenticity of these poems. Varaha Mihira and Parashara were great Indian astronomers, forefathers of astrology and polymath. Astrology does not exist without these great astronomers. They have not expressed the guidance to predict in the form of poems rather as sutras. Those who wrote poems in the name of Pulipani and who wrote Jataka Alankaram are poets, not astrologers. If the astrologer composes poems, it makes sense. If the poet writes about astrology, it doesn't make sense. For example, the lords of 5th and ninth house, though benefic or malefic, will do benefits in any house. The statements like these will divert you from flawless predictions. When Saturn or Mars 
is the lord of the trine and they are in their own house without any subatva that is beneficence it will spoil the house this is the intricacy of padagadipati i have explained these already in my article titled the secrets of padagadipati what makes a planet padagadipati i have mentioned these in my article for leo ascendant since malefic mars becomes a lord of ninth house he becomes padagadipati have you ever observed the truth behind padagadipati when malefic planet becomes a lord of the trine they become padagadipati this is the secret behind the concept of padagadipati when he contemplate the above specified concepts of astrology the truth will blossom let us come back to the question when lord of fifth house is in 10th house should we judge this as the lord of fifth house is in the strongest quadrant or lord of fifth house disappeared in sixth from its own house we can distinguish between these two points based on the nature of the planet there is no common statement that can be drawn for the above question which planet is the lord of fifth house is jupiter the lord of fifth house and he is in 10th house it is not good i hope i'm getting my point across when lord of fifth house is mars and he is in 10th house it is good while you draw an analogy between planets and houses the original dictum factors in that is the benefic has to be in the trines and the malefic has to be in the quadrants when second house lord is in the ninth house it is good because as per the dictum the second ninth and 11th lord connections are said to be good let me ask a question now if second house lord is in ninth house should we consider this as the lord of wealth is in house of luck or should we consider this as the lord of second house is in the eighth house from its own house based on the planets you have to derive the conclusion it is a great skill to apply the original dictum in the right place while predicting a chart please don't confuse all the points kumaran your question is when fifth house lord is in 10th house should we consider this as the ho- the lord of fifth house in the strongest quadrant yes you have to consider both when lord of fifth house is a benefic and is in a 10th house it is not good if fifth house lord is in the 10th house let us say for example for mithuna lagna that is for gemini ascendant venus is fifth house lord and is exalted in 10th house and it is said to be malavya yoga yet there is a shortcoming there will be a hindrance in giving the fifth house effect the native will not have male children the point here is that the jiva karaka or the human relation that the house signifies will be affected because the fifth lord is in sixth from its own house if you observe gemini ascendant many will not have male children there might be three daughters and one son or two daughters or all of the children or girls the prediction of progeny is based on the fifth house and the position of the jupiter in the chart when a planet disappears in sixth or eighth or 12th house from its own house as per bhavat bhavam rule the human relation that is jiva karaka and the materialistic things that is ajiva karaka that the planet signifies will be affected or weakened this is the general rule if fifth house lord is in 10th house the perspective is that lord of fifth is in the greatest quadrant but when it can deliver good results when the fifth house planet is a malefic for example let us say saturn or mars and if they are in 10th house with good strength then they will not spoil fifth house effect that is the point when a malefic becomes lord of trine let us say lord of fifth house is placed in 10th house and it is in its own house this will apply for cancer ascendant then mars disappears to the sixth from its house in this case mars will not spoil the fifth house effects 
In contrary to this, if the planet of the trine is benefic, let us say 5th house lord is in 10th house, then it will spoil the house effects of the 5th house. Here, you have to apply the Bhavat Bhavam concept. In astrology, it is important to know where to apply the rules based on the criteria. Your question is, if lord of 5th house is in 10th house, should we judge that the planet is in the strongest quadrant house? Or according to Bhavad Bhavam, the planet is in 6th from the 5th house. Nowadays, the platform is advanced and you guys don't even type nowadays. Google Talk helps us to type what we think spontaneously. Kumaran, my explanation to your question could have put you in little embarrassment that you asked a question of just two sentences whereas my explanation is very long. I cannot give the explanation in just two lines. If I do so, my conscience will kill me. I would have felt that I gave the response very succinctly and diverted you. So it is important to know where to apply the rules and in which criteria the rules can fit perfectly. I hope you understand my detailed explanation that I gave to your question. Thank you.